I'm Julien Ludic from, uh, from CERN Open Lab. So CERN Open Lab is a collaboration between Intel and uh, industry and uh, CERN, in fact. I'm in the Platform Computer Center. So the Platform Computer Center is uh, uh, main uh, contributor is Intel, and we're receiving a lot of new hardware. And uh, in other hardware, once uh, we received the Mac uh, architecture, so we were one of the first uh, or the first customer to get access to, to this architecture. And we have to show you what we managed to do with that. Okay. So this is a small benchmark uh, code that we extracted from our online uh, framework. This is called the track fitter. So the goal of the track fitter is mainly to reconstruct the tracks and extract the mathematical properties of the tracks uh, to be able to uh, understand if uh, the tracks are of interest. So the goal of the online reconstruction is mainly to uh, decide if a track is good or if we have to throw it because we are dumping 99% of the tracks and uh, the remaining 1% is stored in, uh, on tapes in the computer center and then processed later on the grid. So we don't want to waste a uh, petabyte of storage with uh, useless data and try to get rid of uh, what we don't want uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so for this extent we need uh, to be quick. We also are constrained because we, uh, all, all the hardware is uh, located in, uh, close to the experiments, not in a computer center with uh, massive amount of space. Everything in the experiments is dedicated to the experiments and the detectors and not to computing power. So we need uh, efficient, uh, efficient codes. Uh, that's why all those codes are, avail are heavily optimized to, uh, benefit to, 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 to take benefits from multi-threading and vectorization. So this code was fully vectorized for Xeon first, and then we uh, just added the intrinsics uh, for Mac to be able to vectorize it on the wider vectors. And uh, uh, it's already multi-threaded uh, using a standard OpenMP. And we just take the code, took the code, add the intrinsics for Mac, recompiled it, and launched it directly on the, on the card. At CERN, uh, we have very large frameworks, and we don't want to uh, do massive changes to our code. We, we, we would rather just take the code as it is and recompile it and run it directly on the card to touch as uh, a mi the minimal set of lines uh, in the code. Uh, this is just because this is just an, uh, a really small benchmark. We have uh, uh, also a uh, uh, multi-threaded Geon 4 running on the card, which is um, uh, which counts a million of line of code, and it's compiled with the with Intel compiler for the Mac architecture. But here, concentrates on uh, what we have achieved here, and what I want to show you is uh, a scalability graph. Uh, so the idea here is to uh, to go from one thread to 32 threads. In fact, our um, our night sphere card are equipped with uh, 32 cores. Uh, each core uh, benefits from echo threading, but uh, using OpenMP here, we work. Uh, we just want to use one thread per core. Uh, so we do that with standard OpenMP syntax. Uh, here you see scalability plots, and I can show you exactly what uh, uh, what we are doing. Uh, okay. So this demo is very simple. Uh, we have a, a wrapper code. Uh, that first upload all the data on the on the Mac, uh, and also upload the, the compiled code. So we compile the code on the host with the first compiler and upload it then on the card. Uh, and then we just have uh, uh, we communicate with the card very very basically for the moment with the TTY. So I script I have a commit script that just launched the t uh, the, uh, the full loop of tests uh, scaling from one thread to 32 threads. And uh, that's what we. I'm waiting for the result. Uh, so it, uh, it comes back when uh, when it's finished. Uh, when it has finished running all the 32 threads. Uh, you can see uh, the code here. So it's pretty basic. Uh, we have different sets. Uh, set of data. Here we set the KMP KMP affinity uh, to stick to exactly the the, uh, the core numbers we want. Uh, we know that there are four threads per course. There are numer numerologically, so we just schedule our threads on the on the first core of each uh, on the first thread of each core, it's from one to thirty-two. And here we just have the loop, uh, uh, the loop uh, launching the new binary with uh, on the same data set with more and more cores. And uh, that's mainly. At the end, it just touches five, 
another another script another script on the OS is regularly ga gathering uh, data and checking if uh, this file exists. When this file is created, that means that uh, the execution is finished and uh, and uh, the the my card is not busy running any code on it. So we can relaunch another one without colliding, having uh, too many uh, too many thread, too many uh, processes running on the, on the card and different things. Um, the rest is pretty simple. Uh, we, we regularly gather uh, uh, the result, uh, the resulting file on the card, basically just a timing file, and uh, a set of scripts uh, of uh, Perl scripts, uh, just trans uh, transform them to to feed the plotter, a standard GNU plot plotter, and then display this graph in real time. So sometimes. So it's mostly linear, as you, as you see, but sometimes you have some glitches because of the uh, demo effect. But uh, the card has been running uh, now for more than 24 hours without interruption because nobody stopped it yesterday when we left the booth. And it's still running perfectly well and stably.